Her name is Misery, but it is me who is truly in misery sometimes reading this book. This is the kind of thing <laughs> that is really interesting about this book to me is that like it seems like there's been so much thought put into the character traits and like the way the vampires versus werewolves work but then at the same time it feels like there's just been put stuff in here just to have something in here and it isn't like serving a purpose but she's like well he has a real mate and that's who he's actually in love with and who he's actually having sex with because he's not gonna have sex with me because I'm a vampire and I'm not like actually but you know it they're going to have sex but like the more I'm thinking about this book the more it doesn't make sense I am about to embark on a literary journey that I may never recover from. I will be reading Bride by Allie Hazelwood until I finish it, basically. This is my first uh, Allie Hazelwood book. I don't know if that is a good or a bad thing, honestly. Um, at this point, it's anybody's game. The things I've heard about it are neutral at best, utterly horrifying at worst, um, and I'm really excited to read it. I owe it to myself, you, and also the friend that I'm borrowing it from to finish it. So I will be reading this no matter how much mental scarring it does for me. I feel like it's really not going to be that bad um, and that people were trying to scare me. Or I have way higher confidence in my mental capabilities than I have, than I do. I'm running on like four hours of sleep right now, so sorry. I am like literally not in my body, but I'm gonna start reading this book. I am so scared, but I think we're gonna grow together, and this is gonna be a roller coaster ride that is gonna reshape my view on humanity, for better or for worse. I'm gonna stop talking now and start reading, and I'm gonna see. I'm so scared. You do not have to be good Even the best of us have been misunderstood Alright, some first thoughts after reading the prologue where she gets married because she is a bride. A vamp vampire bride, actually, of all things. Marrying a werewolf dude. This is something I did know going into this book. I knew that it was vampires and werewolves. And listen, as a girly who grew up in the height of Twilight Mania, I was down for this. I remember, like, consuming literally as many werewolf vampire novels when I was in middle school to high school that I could. I literally read nothing else for like three years, but there's, as I am now in my mid-twenties, I just can't help but thinking like the trope of the alpha six-packed male as the werewolf has been done before. It's nothing new. Now, maybe this is done on purpose to give us some sort of familiar characterization for us to latch on to since this is just the beginning of the book. But as of right now, it is every other werewolf guy story. He like crouches on top of her as if she's prey and is like sniffing her like a dog. Like, I'm tired of the dog jokes. Although, I, one thing is that they said he has like a buzz cut and that he doesn't have a tie on, but he looks elegant, which I think is a really interesting word choice. I feel like there was something else that could be used there, but I don't know. I couldn't help a picture like Channing Tatum, um, and I don't even think Channing Tatum is like attractive, but all I could think about was like, this is like some dude from Magic Mike or something. Another thing I'm not like really loving is like they have different colored blood, so the vampires have purple blood and the werewolves have green blood. I think that's really freaking weird. Like, what is that about? Is there a significance to it? Like, purple, maybe. I think if you if you did, like, the dark, like, ma not magenta, like, you know how, like, blood, when you have a lot of it, it looks really dark and purpley? Like, I could, do I could totally get along the lines if it was something like that, and it was because their blood was, like, cold and, like, congealed or something like that. But just why purple blood? Because when you say purple... My mind is thinking either like lavender or like bright Barney purple. And so you're telling me that's what's in these people's veins. And then green, I'm thinking like gross slime lime green. Like, and also why? 
And this is something that I have with a lot of books that like are fantasy or have like magic systems, is that like, I don't care if you want to change certain things, but I need to know why. So our blood is red because of the iron in our blood and the oxygen, it like oxidizes and it creates red. And that is why our blood is red. There's a reason, there's a scientific reason why our blood is the way that it is. Give me a reason that their blood is green. Are they part plant? Are they like photosynthesizing? Is that like a wolf thing? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> Maybe I'm being too picky about it, but I feel like I have to be a little bit because it's like, it takes me out of this world that they're trying to build. And also Misery, first of all, interesting choice for main character name. That's fine. So far, she is like, again, only the prologue, only the first like five pages. This is just my first thoughts on the book. And obviously I retain the right for my opinions and thoughts to change as I learn more about these characters. But so far she has been nothing but like dutiful daughter, girl getting married away to big scary man. Like, it's fine if that's the story you're telling, but I just feel like there could be a more interesting route to go with. But I don't know. I think this is supposed to be romance. I'm really not sure at this point. I'll have to let you know if it starts getting romancy at some point or if this is just gonna keep having weird um, <laughs> vibes the whole time. I guess looking at the back again, she has her own reasons to agree to the marriage of convenience. So I guess we'll have to see. Something about the wolves in their territory. Also, yeah, the werewolves are just like, they just are wolves in people's bodies. It's just a really interesting trope that keeps like perpetuating werewolves. And vampires are seen as like, I don't know, upper class, like ritzy people. And in this case, they have pointy ears like elves. I'm very curious about the vampire lore and the werewolf lore in this world, this this system that they live in. I'm, I'm remaining cautiously optimistic that this is gonna end up being at the least interesting and then a new look maybe at this lore. That's what I'm hoping for. I do have to say there's a part of me that like kind of hopes that I love it because I just finished the Cruel Prince series and I've been chasing that high ever since I finished it. Are you okay? And so maybe this is just exactly what I need or I'm gonna be in like the worst reading slump I've ever been in. Hi, reading update for you. Um, I'm on page 76. I had to write down all the thoughts that I had in this whole little section. I'm still not even halfway through this book, just so you know, but I have so many thoughts. And most of them are neutral, most of them are questions, actually. Okay, this whole idea of her being collateral for the vampires. And so, okay, if you haven't read this book or whatever, this idea that the vampires, like, used her as collateral to keep the vampires safe and the humans safe and like not at war with the werewolves and whatever and like basically the vampires and the humans from my understanding have like an alliance of sorts and that keeps the wares at bay and like they're all there's kind of this like alliance even though the vampires and the werewolves like hate each other but like the humans don't want to die i don't know like how the humans fit into this because it's like supernatural supernatural and then like humans why do we even exist at this point like why haven't humans just like straight up ceased to exist in a world in which this like these entities are like so powerful i guess they're like small groups of people but i just don't understand like how even if you're in the minority but you are powerful like how you aren't like ruling the world in some capacity whatever anyway this idea of her being collateral i think is so interesting but like not in a good way um it reminds me of like wattpad fan fiction like specifically the one about like when when the girl wakes up in the morning and like finds out that her mom like sold her to harry styles you know the one i'm talking about but like it reminds me so much of that. I think it's this like weird fantasy of like being sold off or being used as collateral. Now listen, I love Beauty and the Beast. It's my favorite story of all time. And like maybe I'm a hypocrite for saying it, but like in my adult mind outside of like a fairy tale or whatever, it's just interesting to me. It just, it just seems Watt Patty to me. And I know Allie Hazelwood has said in interviews that she literally gets tropes from her agent and or her manager or whoever and writes to those tropes. Like this is in a lot of ways fan fiction. So I understand that that is like a thing within this context. Like I'm not separating those two things. So 
Maybe other people don't feel that way, but that's kind of how I feel about that. It just kind of rubs me the wrong way. I just think it's weird. It's like you have this main character who's supposed to be powerful and all these things, and then you put her in like the most powerless position and she doesn't even like fight it. Like that's supposed to be the interesting point about her is that she was used as collateral. At least it's the most interesting thing she's done so far. But yeah, it's really interesting. And she's like, I don't really fit in with the humans and I really don't fit in with the vampires and I don't fit in with the wares. And I'm like, you don't seem that like maladjusted to me. Maybe she is a bit maladjusted and I'm just totally missing it, but like she's seen as like an outsider from the vampires, but she doesn't like act differently. And even with humans, she doesn't act that weird either. At least I just don't, I, yeah, that's just a thought that I had, but maybe, maybe it will all get explained. Like maybe I just need to read further. It's fine. This isn't high literature. It doesn't need to all make sense. It's fine. I'm just pointing it out. <laughs> and then something else she says is that like humans, like living with the humans is like living in a different country and living with the wares is like living in another galaxy. And I'm like, bitch where? Bitch how? Because in like the 10 minutes that we've been in the wares world, it hasn't seemed really any different at all other than like they run in like a pack and there's like an alpha. But first of all, the little bit that we've spent with the vampires so far, they just seem like a really effed up family. Like it doesn't come off as like that different to like human society. Maybe I'm totally, am I missing everything? Like that is really the question. Like maybe I'm just missing all these little details. Like other than the fact that they drink blood and like maybe don't work in an office, that's like all I've seen that is different than like what the humans do. I guess maybe the social order or whatever. But then with the wares, like again, it's, it's not that, like there hasn't been anything that weird that's happened yet. So I just, she's making these statements and they're not really backed up by anything that's occurred on the page yet. So like maybe she feels different. Maybe the atmosphere feels different. Okay, fine. But she's making it seem like their culture and customs and everything is so different, which with that, again, it's like, with the wares, they're like everyone is so aggressive and like violent all the time. It's just a really interesting stereotype to have because like for me, I feel like it's just done too much personally. I feel like that's every single werewolf adaptation is always they're aggressive, they're violent. These are all like half-baked thoughts by the way. I'm not saying any of this is right or wrong and or that I'm not missing anything because that is something that happens when I read. I miss I miss little details. So maybe if I miss something, please tell me what I've been missing in the comments because I totally could have glossed over something. I've been very tired while reading. She says like it's nothing like I was expecting. I was expecting them underground and in caves and stuff like that because they're wolves, but they're not underground and in caves. So then I'm thinking, isn't it then closer to everything you've ever experienced in your life before? If they're just like in houses? Because if caves and underground is what you were expecting because it is so weird and different and this is what, like everything else you've ever experienced, then how is it like being in another galaxy? That's why I don't understand. If it was like underground cave systems and they only ate meat and I don't know, didn't sleep or I don't even know. But like from what we've seen, like they don't even have like different customs, you know, that when they greet each other, they don't greet like differently. So I just, I just want it to be backed up by the evidence. Like you have this really, you could have this really interesting world building here with these different cultures of like between like species or whatever. And you just don't. And I just think it could have, it, it's like a little bit of a loss. Like, just because it's a romance doesn't mean that you should like skimp on the world building because it's only gonna make your book better. Last thing, and I know this is getting nitpicky, so like, it's okay. I, if you disagree with me, it's fine. I might be getting a bit nitpicky here. But this one character, Max, comes in before he attacks Misery for like, Literally no reason. He is like, I didn't know vampires could be so beautiful. And I'm like, pause, 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 pause. I need to know what vampire lore exists in this universe because how close is it to our current universe? Is this a universe in which Twilight doesn't exist? Is this a universe in which like the years of 2008 to 2013 never happened? Because I'm really sorry, but literally almost all vampire lore, vampires are gorgeous and seductive. So you're telling me you didn't think that vampires could be beautiful? Also, anatomically, they look very similar to humans and wares when they're not actively like in wolf form. So I don't understand why it like why it's so surprising that there could be a beautiful vampire. This might be nitpicky, but I again, I'm just like 
but like it's also like are you telling me that all vampires are like ugly like I just don't understand like where this is coming from was it like an attempt at being like kind of like speciesist racist against this vampire just to like put a dig into like her species or something it's just so odd to me like it was such like an unhinged like random thing to say that in my mind doesn't even like make sense as a reader because I'm like vampires have always been beautiful like always nine out of ten times and then he like proceeds to like attack her or something like that oh and you know what you know what else because there's this whole thing with the guy the guy that she married in like the beginning of the book and like how he has a mate and she keeps getting reminded of his mate and how she's not his real mate she's just the bride to like pacify the vampires and the werewolves to like not like murder each other because apparently you need to marry off someone in order to like just like not kill each other and like go to war for like I don't even know what reason yet we don't know why the wares and the vampires don't hate, like hate each other or maybe we do and I missed it but like I don't <laughs> like I don't even know why they hate each other like, is it just they hate because they're different? But then also, why are we not at war with the humans? Once again, where do the humans fit into this? Like, I don't understand the world that we live in. I don't understand. So apparently we need to marry off this, the daughter of like the leader of the vampires to the alpha of the wolves in order to like pacify everyone. But she's like, well, he has a real mate and that's who he's actually in love with and who he's actually having sex with because he's not going to have sex with me because I'm a vampire and I'm not like actually, but you know, it they're going to have sex. But that's not the point. The point is that I'm so confused about how everything is working, but like she keeps bringing up this mate and I'm like, misery, why do you care? Like, unless you're also in love with this man, this werewolf, whatever, why do you care? Like, is your part in this to like also isn't your part in this to also like not care like to pacify your father or like whatever this whole deal was like that's what i don't understand so honestly the, like her name is misery but it is me who is truly in misery sometimes reading this book trying to understand what is going on and maybe it's me it could be that i have like zero reading comprehension reading this book honestly it like literally could be me i i don't know this other moment that happened where she meets this like other werewolf guy uh, I don't remember his name off the top of my head there's so many that we've met um, but like again she, every time we talk about the wares it's like they're so violent and aggressive and like gross and then like one of the first wares she meets is like <laughs> asking about the blood that she needs to drink he's like well can you just like not like feed out here like we put your blood in like a separate fridge or whatever and she, like he's queasy like he's gonna pass out from talking about blood talking about it and then in the next sentence she's like it's interesting that he gets queasy about it because they're so violent and they rip apart animals when they're in wolf form and all this stuff and like it's just what's interesting to me is that if they're trying to do like a little juxtaposition of like well they're not all violent or whatever like not all wears hashtag or like if they're trying to do this thing where when they're a wolf they're not entirely human it's just not very separate because when they are wolves it's been stated that they are like intellectually there but they have like different instincts so they like, can hunt and stuff like that but then like I'm just a little bit confused about the configuration of how where society where wolf cogniz cognitive functioning lies like I just I just want to understand because you could do the thing where like they are grossed out by blood but they're also wild animals and I just like can't see them being grossed out by that and also like they're so sickened by it he's so sickened by the fact that she has to drink blood like dude you turn into a wolf like your body your skeleton turns into an entirely different creature you don't think that's a little bit nasty but drinking blood is where you draw the line like that's and they don't even drink like from humans. They like go to blood donation places and they drink donated blood. Like it's donated. Like honestly, like if you're going to be a vampire, this is the most ethical way to do it. Maybe maybe it will be explained. I'm hoping. I'm hoping that this exact this only this. I hope only this gets explained. Honestly. The rest of us have been misunderstood. So get up on your feet. The sun is shining, repentance through the rain. Its rays will wash you clean. Good morning, friends. I will be continuing to vlog today, but I'm actually 
getting my hair cut. So it's all going away. I think I was just ready for a change. So when you see me again in this vlog, my hair will be different. Howdy, hi. I will be honest, I completely <laughs> forgot to make an update after my haircut, but here it is. It's nice and short. Let's talk about how crazy this book has been. I've been taking notes so that I don't forget what I wanted to talk about. You know, I don't know what it is about this book exactly that... It, I don't want to say bothers me. It's not that this book bothers me. You know, Allie Hazelwood isn't doing anything wrong necessarily. Um, that I can think of off the top of my head, but the problem that I'm having I think comes down to the fact that She is a fan fiction writer first and this is reading like fan fiction for a show that I never watched Or for a movie that I've never seen The characters I feel like are supposed to remind me of someone else and They just don't and so I don't get that feeling of like when you read fan fiction where there's a reason that even if the writing isn't good, you still love it because you care about the characters and, you know, like the writing doesn't need to be great or amazing because you already are emotionally invested in it. I'm not getting that with this this book and these characters. I don't really care about them. That's a horrible thing to say. Um, but yeah, so here's my update. I'm halfway through-ish. I'm still planning on reading a bit more today. But some things that I've seen that I want to talk about. Now this is, we're getting into spoiler territory here, yeah? One thing that I actually really, really liked about the change in vampire lore, I guess this is, I don't know if this is a change in vampire lore, but like a change in a lot of recent vampire lore is that misery can go into people's minds and make them like thralls. She can like read their, their thoughts. She can make someone become hypnotized, which goes back to like Dracula days, I feel like this is something that traditional vampires could do, so, so people can hypnotize them, and she kind of gives us a scientific explanation for why vampires can do that. Great. I love that. I think it's really interesting. I think it's been used really well in the book so far. I thought that was, like, to start positive, I feel like that was something that I actually really did like in the book in terms of vampires, because so often vampires can be boiled down to just, you know, hot people who drink blood and don't sleep. Um, and I like when vampires have like powers, personally, um, that make them better predators, you know, like if you were to treat them as like an animalistic being, I guess. I also, I'm pretty sure I laughed out loud at Misery's inherent affection, like her infatuation with peanut butter. Like of all things, I think it's just so funny. And that like, she's like, yeah, our molars are vestigial. Like we can't chew, but like you have teeth so you can chew like that. So a little confusing here, but funny at the same time. Cause she says, our molars are mostly vestigial. So no chewing. But like, babe, if you have teeth and you have a jaw that hinges, you can chew. That, that I don't get. That I don't get. Because if you have a vestigial organ, like, so, is it vestigial because they're, like, not as big as our molars? They don't, like, like, what makes it, what makes it vestigial? Because it, like, they have a use, they had a use, but you still have them. Like, you could use them. Like, the issue then would be the whole fact that you, like, have a digestive tract that you can't use or that has changed to only be able to digest blood or absorb the nutrients somehow. But she can digest food. So I'm a little lost here. At that point, at that point, I wouldn't even put something like that in here. I would just say that they can eat but they choose not to. Because now I'm confused. Now I'm thinking way too much about vampire teeth and not even their fangs. Like this is the kind of thing <laughs> that is really interesting about this book to me is that like it seems like there's been so much thought put into the character traits and like the way the vampires versus werewolves work But then at the same time it feels like there's just been put stuff in here just to have something in here And it isn't like serving a purpose. I know I'm thinking way too hard about this book I know I am I had this conversation with my friend and She read this book in in one day and she loved it and I was she was like so how are you liking it? And I'm like listen 
I feel like I'm thinking too much about this book when I'm reading it. She's like, yeah, you can't think about it. And I'm like, listen, normally when I read books, I'm not thinking about it, but I'm trying to think critically reading this book because I'm going to be talking about it, reviewing it. So I don't want to just like go in for the vibes, you know, but like the more I'm thinking about this book, the more it doesn't make sense. And she goes on to say that it's because eating has become self-indulgent among vampires, but like since when does she care? Babe, they sold you to the humans as literal collateral. Why do you care if it's self-indulgent? Like, so she only eats peanut butter. Like, listen, if it was me, I would be eating whatever I wanted whenever I wanted. I would not care about anything. And then with Lo, he is like, I eat for pleasure all the time. I eat everything all the time. And like, yeah, mood. I get that. I feel that. I eat stuff that I don't necessarily need to survive all the time. So I guess in a way, we're seeing this like dichotomy between someone who's like really strict, I don't even want to say morals, like has a really strict uh, way of living because of like her society or whatever, and then this guy who completely is like the opposite. But like in terms of someone who's been like living with humans for all this time, I feel like this shouldn't be such a life altering, life changing moment, you know, like this isn't something that sh should be completely unheard of for her, right? Like. At least I feel like it shouldn't be, right? Like, they're just like weird humans. <laughs> On another positive note, a scene I really, really liked was between Misery and Lo talking about Anna and his relationship to her and how he kind of became like this parental guardian figure and how he feels like he cannot live up to her needs uh, because he's not a good guardian, but like yet he's the alpha wolf. How he let her watch The Exorcist when she was like six years old, like, just like silly, not silly, because traumatizing, but like just in the way that like he's not perfect because up until now we haven't really seen him really crack beneath the surface. He's always been kind of like at a distance and this was the first moment for me personally. I know there have been other moments earlier, but this was the first moment for me where I really felt a connection between the two characters and I think it, this is about when you're supposed to, even though I feel like it's fairly far into the book to be feeling like this is the first time that I feel like they've really emotionally connected to each other. Um, but I like that it was bonding over Anna because her relation, like their little like familial relationship is like really sweet. And then once again, the vampire teeth being used as like vestigial organs, because then later on, on page 174, Misery tells us that because they feed from blood bags, they don't even like use their fangs really. And like she's been really ashamed of them because, you know, every time she would smile, they would like make comments about it or whatever. And there's like this mutual blood drinking that can like be incorporated into sex. This is foreshadowing. I am 99% sure there will be some sort of blood play further on in this book when eventually we get to a certain scene that I know is coming at some point. I just have a feeling this is foreshadowing into that. So I marked it so that I can say, look, I was right. She talked about it already so that I can feel smart later. The mates in this, like he's been talking about his mate this whole time and you're telling me it's basically like imprinting from Twilight. For one person, it's this like biological need. Like you love this person even if they don't love you back. And the way that Lo talks about her, like there's no way that their bond is like actually like real because he's like obsessed with this girl. He's obsessed with her. So maybe they're mates. Is this like faded mates? Are they like the true mates? I feel like I'm cracking a code here. He said there was another mate and that it's this other woman and she's with the vampires. But now misery is here, but he's totally into her. So like, is that really his true mate? If he's able to fall in love with someone else so quickly or were they mates all along? I feel like I just cracked a code. I feel like a genius right now. If I'm right, this is gonna be so embarrassing watching back. I'm gonna be so wrong. Okay, and then we get to the moment that literally made me almost vomit. And that is when they get out of this plane or whatever that he drove, because apparently he's a pilot too, because um, he does everything. I think he must have just like been spending the last 50 years or whatever just like honing on his skills. He's like, I, I pilot, done, alpha, done. He's like, you have to smell like me, like you're mine. First of all, ew. Second of all, possessive much. Third of all, ew. And so my first thought was, he's gonna piss on her, right? Like, he's going to piss on misery. That is gonna be, like, what happens in this book. Because, like, the whole thing is, like, werewolves are like dogs, right? That is literally where my mind went. I was like, he's gonna piss. 
He's going to piss on this girl. This poor girl is... But I was wrong. It was worse. I know some of you read this and you were like, yes. That was not my reaction. I almost threw the book on the floor. I did not though. Um, so instead of pissing on her and like marking her as his territory, which is like literally how they like talk about it, is that like she needs to smell like she belongs to him, like she's with him so that they don't attack her because apparently telling them, hey, this is my wife and if you attack her, I'm just gonna like kill you. Apparently that's not enough anymore. No, 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 no. You need to smell like he owns you. Fine, okay, whatever. No, he starts licking her. He's saying, he's saying, baby, it's all business. You need to smell like me so that they don't hurt you, they don't attack you because you're with me, baby girl. Like, I, this is just, this is all just in a day's work. But no, he's like making out with her. Like, kissing her, like sucking her neck and whatever. And it's like, what are we? I mean, I know they're married, so like, whatever. But like, there has been absolutely no true, like, sexual lead up to this. Like, no, like, conversation of, like, boundaries or anything between the two of them. I know he was like, yeah, are you cool with this? And she was like, yeah, I guess. But like, there hasn't been, like, a real conversation. And like, she still thinks that he's, like, mated to this other woman. And like, yeah, they're married, but she's always just been like, yeah, but it's not like that. Because like, we're never gonna be like that. So this whole, like, relationship situation between them is just giving me like some weird vibes. I'm sure lots of people were like really into this scene but for me I was like this is odd and like clearly Misery was into it. Good, good for you girl. Good for you but like wow reading that was a trip for me. Before you guys like come hating in my comments or whatever like just I don't like read smut. I don't read spicy romances very frequently and that's just a personal preference of mine i'm reading this knowing that this is in here so like it's totally fine like i'm not like mad about it and if you enjoy this please 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 enjoy it read whatever you want but i'm i'm kind of like poking fun here a little bit um because i know that like a lot of people like these kinds of tropes and these kinds of things and like if that's something you enjoy great for me my reaction was like huh, no i do not know personally no thank you I actually would have preferred if he had pissed on her. <laughs> I think that would have at least been funny. <laughs> That's a joke. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna get back to reading. We've made it to the halfway point. Halfway. We can do this. You do not have to be good. So I finished the book and I have some thoughts. I actually have a lot of thoughts. The question is where to start. So firstly, I want to say that this last like quarter of the book was definitely for me the best part of the book. And I do think that correlates with the fact that it is when there started to be a bit more plot involved outside of this relationship between Misery and Lo. Because I'll be honest, I forgot for about two thirds of this book that there was something else happening outside of this like weird relationship. Um, and that her, like, sister slash best friend was straight up kidnapped or murdered or whatever. One thing I want to point out, though, on page 290 of this book, which literally made me question everything about the world building that Allie Hazelwood has put into this book, and that is because Misery pinches Lowe's left side, and he says his liver he, like, says it's his liver, but, like, with a question mark, and she's like, no, the wrong side. He says his appendix still wrong gallbladder nope and then he's like oh human anatomy and it's like are you telling me that the organs of these creatures human where where was that they're like not anything similar to humans because like where was that world building because nowhere in this did it make it seem like they were anything other than like weird humans this really took me out of the story because it just seemed so unnecessary like they were just trying to separate the werewolves and the vampires from humans just a little bit further but for me it just doesn't make any sense to put that in there like other than to just be kind of like witty and funny but it honestly just took me out of the story completely and I know that might be something really nitpicky for a lot of people I know I've been really nitpicky about this book but like I just want it to make sense like if you're gonna be witty and funny or whatever like but we have had like they keep saying all these differences between werewolves and humans but like they don't even make sense at least to me. Um, because the werewolves specifically, other than the fact that they shift into wolves, like, 
they still eat like humans, they still act like humans, they still sleep and everything, so like there would be no reason for them to have different organs or that their organs are in like different places. It just seemed, it just seems a bit counterproductive from like an editing storytelling point of view, other than the fact that maybe it was supposed to be funny. And then we get to the part of the book where we meet finally who we believe Lowe's mate is Gabby. It was really underwhelming for me honestly, like they kind of they kind of made it like it was going to be this big thing the whole time and then obviously it wasn't and then I was like obviously I was right this whole time in that Misery is actually the mate and it's this whole vampire werewolf faded mates thing whatever because like he does not seem to care about Gabby like a mate whatsoever anytime that they've brought her up in any regard so and guess what I was right so maybe they're mates so maybe they're mates so maybe they're mates I was right and I was so proud of myself and then I was like wait they like made it really obvious and then we get to the infamous conversation about nodding I am not going to explain what this is in this video Ye I'm not even gonna talk about it I don't even want to talk about it I don't even want to talk about the spicy scenes but I feel like I have to because it's in the nature of this book but honestly for me weird it was weird I didn't like it personally I know some people are into those kinds of things not me and also like the more the further we got into the book the more like unhinged and like toxic masculinity low kind of became like in terms of like I know some people are into this but like the protective alpha wolf thingy again I thought actually his character was way better in the beginning when he was like reserved and sweet and like really I, I understand that what he's doing is out of love, but for me, it just came out in a way that just, I really didn't like. It actually made me not like the character at all. The more I just didn't like how overbearing he really became, I guess, is maybe the best way to put it. In terms of quality, I thought the spicier scenes were fine. Like, I don't like, I, I don't read them a lot. They didn't make me like cringe viscerally like they do, like some authors have done. I'm not really the person to comment on that kind of stuff, but it made sense for these characters. It's not like it came out of nowhere for them, you know, like there was some lead up to it. It was never like out of nowhere and then all of a sudden their clothes are off or something like that. I appreciate the build up that Allie Hazel would put into it, but those kinds of scenes are just not for me in general, so... And then we get to the most absolute, like, James Bond villain moment in this book, which is just absolute, this whole section, arguably the best part of the book for me, but also so... <laughs> Misery's dad is just a straight-up evil dude. There's absolutely no redeeming qualities about this guy. And honestly, I think it made him a boring character. He could have been a really interesting villain, a mastermind, whatever. There could have been so much more happening with this. Um, but instead, he's just like a villain out of a James Bond movie. There's absolutely not a single redeeming quality about him. He's just in it for his own self-interest. He doesn't regret anything he's done. He straight up is like, oh, you don't think I'll kill my own daughter? I already tried to. I'm evil. And it was like, okay, dude, whoa. But like there was, like the vampires are said to be like a, a culture or species of humanoid beings that are like already going extinct. She's someone who can produce a vampire heir and you're willing to just like kill her instead like when there's already so few vampires in the first place. Like the logic is completely gone. I think it would have been more evil to like keep her and use for like your own purposes you know but like instead no like it's I just thought it was so crazy there's like I straight up like a six page monologue of this guy explaining his thought process from the beginning to the end it was all in his own self-interest and I was just like this guy is just crazy but like there isn't a moment you know I for me a good well-rounded villain has at least one quality about them that is redeemable or that makes them interesting or makes them good in some way even if it's only good from their perspective but like you can see where that line of thinking is coming from but no with this guy he was just like straight up evil and I think the other problem is we didn't get enough time with him on the page to really care you know in any regard 
either way. Like, we were just supposed to hate him from the beginning, we hate him from the end, there was absolutely no change in that. Uh, which I actually think is really unfortunate because it could have been a really interesting combination between like the political atmosphere between the werewolves and the vampires and the humans and this like game of chess that everyone is playing. But no, he's just like straight up manipulative. He made the governor a thrall for him basically, feeds him information, like he's just supposed to be like this mastermind and just straight up evil. And honestly that for me just made it kind of disappointing in that regard. And then we find out that Misery and Lo are in fact mates, and I was right all along. And I feel like it was supposed to be like a dramatic reveal or something, but it was like so obvious at that point that I was just like, all right, this isn't even satisfying anymore. Like they should have told us 10 chapters ago. <laughs> like, And I hated that they kind of kept Misery in the dark like the whole time about almost everything. Like this poor girl um, is just going through it left and right and is just being manipulated by every single person in her life. She's never really been let into the group, like into the information. She's just kind of, I don't know, I feel like she just keeps put, being put in danger but like never with the information that she needs to like equip herself to get out of it. And then we meet who is probably my favorite character which is Serena, which <laughs> we get her for like three chapters or whatever at the end. And she quickly became just like one of my favorites. You hear so much about her and then we meet her and she's kind of just exactly how you expect her to be. And I always loved the best friend character. So that's probably part of the reason why I just really liked her as a character to begin with. I find out that she's a half werewolf and, and there's another half werewolf, which is Lo's little sister, Anna, which is like why they, the, you find out that the dad was like spying on them to like basically like experiment on them and like y use them to like, stop the humans and werewolves from creating an alliance or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then they all live happily ever after, so there you have it. For a romance, I would say pretty. it, it was pretty good. There was still a decent... There was still a decent amount of plot outside of the romantic elements. Enough that I think would keep you interested, and I think that that's why this book has done so well because people who are reading it for the romance are still getting an okay story out of it. There is a mystery, there is a satisfying ending, and I can understand why people really really have enjoyed this book. I think the the world building and the plot was just too loose to keep me engaged fully the whole time. I definitely tend to prefer my books to be plot first with romance in it versus the other way around. So, but I can definitely see where a lot of the people who enjoy this book are coming from and why it's so popular within the romance atmosphere. I think I would recommend it to the right people. I think there's definitely an audience for it and a bunch of people who are very passionate about these, this book. But I probably wouldn't read it again and I probably won't read any of Allie Hazelwood's other books personally. Overall, I would probably sit this around three and a half stars for me mostly for the ending because I thought that like, that's when things got really interesting. <laughs> there were just so many elements of it that could have been improved like in terms of the world building and the relationships between characters and I felt like it could have been done a lot in a more satisfying way. In terms of romantic elements there was a lot there that I did really like. I did like the relationship between Misery and Lo and how it gradually increased through the book. It's not just like boom from the beginning. I think there were a lot of good things about it as well, but I think overall in terms of enjoyment it's definitely not a four or a five star book for me um, and I wouldn't like read it again. So yeah, those were my thoughts on Allie Hazelwood's book Bride. If you've read this book please let me know what your thoughts were below. Do you disagree with anything I said? Do you agree with anything I said? Like please don't be afraid to contradict me. I, I'm just one person, one opinion. Lots of people have loved this book, so if you're one of them, I'm very happy for you. <laughs> if you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you watching my stuff and supporting the channel. I know I haven't been posting a lot recently, but I'm hoping to get back on the train and have some more videos out soon. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.